voice of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me and I will answer you, and I will lead you back your captives from every place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve you with constancy, the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. 
Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people say, peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. According to Matthew, Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. 
Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not have then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with 10. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside where there'll be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. I always want to start off my homilies now when I'm taping them as light camera action. So many years ago, oh my goodness, a good 23 years ago, I was giving a retreat in Rhode Island and there was a good 300 teenagers on this retreat. And a group of boys came, a couple of brothers and friends of theirs, and they kind of gathered and first time I had really met them and they were on the retreat and Wonderful, wonderful young kids. It's a lot of fun, just wonderful young men. And one of them had a video camera with him, speaking of cameras. And he was making movies with his friends and his brothers during the breaks. And they were fantastic, like little films. And like, you think he had five cameras and an editing machine when it was all in his head. He had this incredible gift of seeing what he wanted and being able to bring it together into this little short 10 minute film with his friends and his brothers. Eventually this young man became part of my retreat team and he would make these movies and I would say to him over and over again, the gift is for God's glory. God gave you a gift. You have to use this gift for God's glory. And he's like, ah, oh, I'm gonna go to Hollywood, I'm gonna go to Hollywood. And he had the talent for Hollywood. He was incredible. And he would, could always do stuff like, he'd say to me, because I was a great fan of his, you know, with the stuff he did. So he said, Father, we're gonna, make, we're gonna break curfew and make a movie. I said, great, don't get in trouble, let me see when it's done. <laughs> so every retreat, they were sneaking off to make movies at night, but I knew they were, they were doing. And a lot of it had to do with the faith uh, and uh, how they would make these movies. And it was incredible what he was able to do. And so for four years, year after year, retreat after retreat, I would tell him to use this gift for God's glory and he would tell me he's going to Hollywood. Well, he graduates high school and gets a job in New York City doing production work immediately out of high school. He's living with a group of young men for our New York retreat program. He's living at that retreat, uh, that house there where a the group of young men live to work on the retreats, but he's working in New York City. And his first day on the job in Tower Two, is 9-11 and he's caught in the towers bodies are falling and hitting in front he's down at the first floor and from the glass windows he sees the tragedy of horror 
He told me he heard the second plane coming in. He grabbed his head, he ducked, he made his act of contrition, figuring this was it. Eventually, he did get out. And about 10 minutes after getting out, a few blocks away, the towers fell behind him. And then his, the words I spoke to him came back to him. The gift was for God's glory. And he realized this beautiful gift, this beautiful talent that the Lord gave to him to make movies truly was for God's glory. And the men he had been living with at our retreat house in New York all happened to be incredible young men with gifts and talents, one audio, one script writing and so forth. And they formed a Catholic production company. They made this beautiful movie called a Fishers of Men, you can watch it on YouTube. It's a 17 minute movie on the priesthood and has inspired countless vocations, amazing. They went on to make a full length feature film which you can pick up at Redbox, well it used to be, I don't know if it's still out now, but they brought in 30 film festival awards called The Human Experience. A beautiful movie of two brothers who travel to find out the meaning of life and at the end of their journey it's family, faith, that make truly the beauty of the human person goes into what it means to be human, is faith and family. Beautiful movies. He's continuing on with a separate production company now and doing fun things at the same time, still doing religious things. But he never forgot that line, the gift was for God's glory. So many of us are so talented with so many various gifts and we can use those gifts in so many different things, so many various ways we can use these gifts that God has given to us. But truly the gift is for God's glory. We think about this beautiful church in which we're praying in, that beautiful backdrop, all of that hand carved wood done in 1945, donated by Holy Cross College, that beautiful sanctuary that we have. Some artist used his gift for God's glory making little statues of the saints in the high altar there and of Saint Anne and our Lord Jesus Christ handcrafted that, the gift was for his glory. So many of us have been talented and gifted with so many beautiful things. And we have to remember that gift that we have is for the glory of God. Now it's true that some of our gifts can be used for the, you know, to support our families, you know, and so forth. And, and, but we can use them to make money and so forth. And we should use them to support our families. And with the extra that we can make from those gifts that we have, we can support the poor and assist others. That's true. But we can also use them for God's glory. There's some people very talented with computers and so forth and can let those fingers go on those boards so fast they can make computers do things. And, which doing technology work on computers, IT work, they can make money, they can, spare, they can help their family, but also that gift can be used for evangelization purposes and spreading the gospel through the internet. Everybody has a gift and talent the Lord has bestowed on them in some way. Perhaps it's sewing and making blankets. Some of you make crochet and those, you can make them to do various things, but we can also make them and give them to hospitals for Maybe some mom give a, who wants a blanket for their baby just as a gift to say, to, just to congratulate them or to the, you know, to the uh, pregnancy crisis center. A nice gift of a blanket for a baby. A small talent and a small gift can become so beautiful and can become so much more. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he speaks to us about the gifts and talents he bestows upon us and he expects us to do double with what he's given to us. My friend Chuck took his gift and his ability to make movies and made double on it. Uh, perhaps triple, with, particularly with all the priests he drew to the priest, many drew to the priesthood through that film he did on the priesthood. But each of us have been gifted and graced by God and we have to ask the Lord continuously, how do we use these gifts that he has given to us in such a way that they multiply? Now outside of particular gifts, there is also the gifts that each and every single human person possess. We're told to love the Lord our God with our whole strength, our whole soul, our whole will, our whole heart, our whole mind. We each got five talents. Our soul, our heart, our mind, our will, and our strength. We can't bury those gifts of our intellect in this world. We can't bury the gift of our, of our strength with just the things of this world. We can't bury the gift of our hearts by setting our hearts on the things of this world. We can't bury the gift of our intellect by simply learning about things of this world. We can't bury this beautiful gift of our will by choosing simply the things of this world. 
Those gifts and those talents we have to know and to love and to serve have to be given over to the gift of the Lord and has to expand and multiply in the gifting of our heart to God, in the gifting of our soul to God, in the gifting of our mind to God, in the gifting of our will to the Lord to truly learn how to invest our heart in a relationship with God, to invest our heart in being able to truly love the Lord our God with the fullness of our heart, to take this gift of our intellect and to truly come to know God in our intellect by studying our faith, knowing our faith, coming to know our Lord Jesus Christ in the study of our faith, to take the gift of our will, and to make the hard decisions to choose, to do the true thing, the good thing, to give our will back to the Lord by doing His holy will. We pray in the Our Father, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's only gonna happen if we choose to do God's will on earth as it is in heaven. To spend that gift of our strength by focusing our strength on truly working for the glory of the kingdom of God, truly seeking that kingdom of heaven with the gift of our strength, resisting evil and choosing the good with the gift of strength that God has bestowed upon us. To use that gift of our soul to enter into intimacy with God. Not to waste these beautiful gifts of our mind, our soul, our strength, our will, our, our intellect, simply the things that are here that are temporary and passing, but learn how to invest them in God so they become double <laughs> and become that much more beautiful. I hope that makes sense, that jump that I just made to these five beautiful talents that we have as humans, to be able to truly invest ourselves in an intimate relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ so that who we are becomes that much more greater, that much more beautiful, that much more good, good-er, right? <laughs> to seek always to make that investment in the Lord. Today we hear the Lord's response to two, thi to two, to two ways that, uh, or to two different persons who, and how they responded. The ones who invested themselves and invested what the Lord had given to them, they heard the words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the, um, come and share your master's joy, right? That's what we all want to hear. The one who chose not to, who buried the talent, did not use that gift that was entrusted to him, but buried it, he heard that terrible words, throw this useless servant into the darkness outside where there'll be the wailing and grinding of teeth. That doesn't sound like fun. So our Lord's warning us, <laughs> warning us, alerting us, <laughs> encouraging us, listen, take that talent that he's given to us, take those talents we've been given and invest them in the right places, make double on it so we might hear those beautiful words, come share your master's joy. May God bless you. And Mary keep you. I believe in one God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in our Father who loves us, we bring before him our needs and petitions as we pray. For Holy Father Pope Francis, that the Lord may watch over him, assist and guide him, grant him every grace to know the truth, speak the truth, and live in the truth, we pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for all of our bishops and priests that they may celebrate the sacraments worthily and well, we pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray that the Lord may give us the wisdom and understanding to know the gifts that he has given to us, Give us the prudence necessary to see how we can apply those gifts to for the building up of the kingdom, that we may have the fortitude to do what is right and good with the gifts that God has given us. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for all those we know who have died, that they might enjoy the fullness of divine life, especially all the souls in purgatory who have no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for peace in our country, we pray for a peaceful outcome of the election. We pray for all those we know who are suffering from the virus in our country for complete healing. We pray for an end to the virus that we may once again live our lives in peace. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our own hearts. Father, you have bestowed so many graces upon us. Give us the wisdom and knowledge and the understanding necessary to know what those gifts are, the prudence and the fortitude to put them into practice, that we may build up your kingdom and that we might truly love you as you deserve to be loved. Through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to the right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from the unending death. and By rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to, to reconcile us to yourself, 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
To be in your God is my happiness, to place my hope in God the Lord. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Again, patience with announcements, and I thank you for your patience. Uh, announcements means there's things happening at the parish and there's a lot going on. I apologize for my stumbling through the Mass. It's been a very, very busy week, and today was a busy day, which is a good thing for a priest. That means the parish is alive. So we had our confirmation Monday night, and it was beautiful. 22 of our kids were confirmed. Tomorrow we'll have Mass, and they'll be here tomorrow just uh, all together sitting in the front like they've been. Uh, every week since we began their confirmation classes at the beginning of the year, just to congratulate them. So keep them in prayer that they persevere and do well. So wonderful, wonderful class. And also Sam, where'd she go? There she is. Uh, she and Stephen served for the bishop that night. They did a very, very good job. I said to them before mass, don't embarrass me. <laughs> and they didn't. <laughs> they did a wonderful job. Tuesday again, 7 p.m., we have our adult faith formation class. We're plugging along. We're putting it on the website every week, too, if you want to watch it. Uh, this week, uh, we're going to do the uh, direct prophecies of Jesus Christ by the gospel writers. So we're going to go directly through the gospels and the uh, quotations in scripture where Jesus directly fulfills the prophecies as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tell us. So we're going to see that on Tuesday night uh, for the adult faith formation. Today, this morning, we had a very good and productive uh, uh, pro-life ministry. At St. James, we are reinstituting our pro-life ministry team. We had a wonderful meeting, almost 20 people at it, and it was a fantastic meeting. So as a result, every Friday at three o'clock, we're gonna be having Exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. I'll lead us in the Divine Mercy Chaplet, some prayers for the unborn, the benediction, so every Friday to come and pray for the unborn. And then we'll have another meeting uh, to discuss further plans and other things on December 12th, the Feast of Our Lady Guadalupe. So after the Saturday morning Mass, there'll be Rosary, and then we'll go over to the hall for another meeting. So keep your eyes open for those announcements on the new pro-life ministry. Our young adult group will be meeting on the 20th, Friday the 20th, at 6.30 to 8.30. That's 18 to 35 years old. We're gonna have a potluck dinner. Come upstairs from adoration, some adoration, a little talk, then downstairs again for conversation. Social COVID, social distancing, COVID-19 thingamajig, so all that'll be taken care of. And um, we had about nine in our last, and we're expecting a lot more at this next one, so praise God, it's good. We're, uh, we need to support that part of our powers, the young adults. Thanksgiving Mass, we have this Wednesday evening Mass at 10, uh, 7 p.m., Thursday morning, 10 a.m. on Thanksgiving Day. The next evening on Friday, the 29th, the day, or 29th, 27th, the day after Thanksgiving, we'll start our youth group, so high school youth group. We'll start on uh, the day after Thanksgiving, 6.30 to 8.30. Our youth group directors are, um, uh, let's see where the names here, I have them written down to say, tell you who they are. Uh, Aurea D'Souza, who grew up in the parish, and her fiance, who's a teacher at a uh, high school, uh, Sebastian Gamoris. And then we also have uh, Christian and Jamie Wells, as well as Santiago. So they'll be our youth group directors. And uh, so the young adults who will be helping run our youth group. It's such a lot of fun. We're working on the junior high group, so hang on. We're going to get there. But you're not junior high yet, are you? Oh, well. So, but we'll get, we'll get around to you. Well, you'll get around to us, one of the two. We are going to be restarting our Knights of Columbus. Not restarting, but trying to revive and give more life to our Knights of Columbus. So Knights Columbus Council 2379, I understand, was the envy of the Diocese of Worcester. And so on December 7th at 7 p.m., we'll be meeting those active knights from the parish. The remaining active knights will meet with state council and our district council members, and we're going to work on re, uh, starting the Knights of Columbus. So if you've been a Knight of Columbus or you want to get involved, the men get involved in the Knights of Columbus, uh, be, uh, keep aware of the uh, events that will be coming up for our restarting of our Knights of Columbus. I'm also reactivating our Ladies' Altar Society. So I realized I haven't changed the altar cloth in some time, and there's this decorating, all these things to do, and so any women who are interested in being part of that, I'm gonna have a meeting with you on December 5th at 10 a.m. to talk about the things we can do 
uh, to make the church and keep the church beautiful, changing of seasons and things like this and cleaning of, of things. And uh, you're welcome to be part of them. I know you like doing that stuff. So age is no, no issue. <laughs> so our Ladies Altar Society concludes young ladies as well. So I'm um, going to start that on, Dece on uh, December 5th. We'll talk about it at 10 a.m. St. James Mask, if your mask is in, it's on that back wall. Uh, it might still be coming in, but if you ordered masks, it's on the back wall. You can still order masks. The order forms on the, at the doors. $10 a mask, personalized. So that's there too. We mentioned last week that uh, Trisha will be retiring, and so her last weekend will be next weekend, the Feast of Christ the King. But it's also going to be the Feast of Trisha the Queen. So we'll have a, a double feast tomorrow as we say goodbye to Trisha and her hard work and her 20, 23 years of service to the parish here and playing organ for us. So as she heads into these wonderful years, so thank you. And so next, uh, the first Saturday of Advent at the 1030, he's going to switch into the later Masses uh, after he moves to Warren. But uh, our new um, music director will be Joseph D DJ I O K. So, joke. I don't know how to say his last name. It's a very strange last name. Anyway, he's 28 years old. He has. He's married with two little kids. Uh, he's a audio engineer. He played at two other parishes as a music director, and so he'll be taking on the new role as the new music director. And so, um, you know, with the change of music directors, there's a change of music. So we just have to be ready for that change, and that's okay. Change is okay. <laughs> so uh, it's part of growth, right? Is change. Um, so he'll be, he'll be starting the first Sunday of Advent. Um, so presently, you know, we, the last week we had our budget um, inserts in the uh, bulletin. And just a reminder that we need to hit the mark of $5,000 a week or $20,000 a month to make our budget. And so um, I know people are giving what they can give in this parish is amazing and uh, how well and how beautifully you give. So just keep that in mind as you discern what you're able to give that we need to hit that mark. And we do pull, publish in the bulletin every week what came in the week before, so that's there. Uh, you'll see in the back, in front of the Paris Center, they're working on it today, our Eagle Scout, uh, um, James uh, Alderton, he's working his Eagle Scout project, building up Calvary Prayer Garden. If you wanna to donate to that, put a little check in the box, in the basket. I put in the memo, Calvary Prayer Garden. So uh, James is doing a beautiful job. It's gonna be a, a large crucifix that'll be facing Main Street and they'll have a nice wall around the hill garden with be flowers on top of the garden. Uh, once spring comes, we'll plant the flowers. But there'll be some benches and prayer benches there. So um, anybody driving by will see the crucifix. And, and, uh, but if you're walking by, you can stop and just pray there before our Lord and, uh, and the beautiful statue will be there of him. The statue is about uh, another five weeks out, the actual corpus, but You'll see the work he's doing, that beautiful work he's doing, fantastic. Um, and then finally, check the bulletin and the website for all the rest of the stuff going on. You see, we're getting back to life, right? It's good, I hope. And um, like I said last week, I'm just getting started. More to come. We're just getting ourselves back to life again here. So this is wonderful. And I'm so happy and so grateful to how so many of you are showing up for things and being part of things. And, and assisting with stuff, it's, it's just incredible. Oh, I forgot to mention this. We are gonna have a Christmas pageant with our little ones on December 19th. So our kids are gonna do a Christmas pageant in the hall. So, <laughs> so that's good. So uh, we are gonna have a little uh, Christmas pageant, a little nativity at the end, so it should be fun. That'll be in the hall and we'll do the um, uh, uh, epiphany will be in here with our kids at the mass when they'll present their gifts to the baby Jesus on the Feast of Epiphany. Whew, there's a lot going on. Now you know why I'm so tired. Please stand. <laughs> it's all good. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.